Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. I'm Alex Steele alongside Damien Sassauer. This is Bloomberg Intelligence Radio, and we are broadcasting to you live from the Earthshot Summit right here at the Plaza Hotel in Midtown Manhattan. That summit celebrates innovators who are trailblazing solutions to repair our planet, and that event is co-hosted by Bloomberg Philanthropies. We have a great guest uh, lined up for you, sort of connecting the dots between how we go green and carbon neutral and how we also pay for it. Uh, joining us now is Nadia Calvino, president of the European Investment Bank, EIB. The European Green Deal is huge. There's a set of policies that look to make the European Union climate neutral by 2050. You're looking to mobilize over 1 trillion euros uh, in order to do that. How's it going? Yes, well, it's going well. It's going well. We are on track to meet the target of 1 trillion euros in investment in green finance. More than 50% of our annual investments go to the, to the climate transition, to the green finance, so as to make it a success, a European success, a global success for all of us. But why do I keep hearing then that, uh, that Europe has more of the stick approach and the U.S. has the carrot approach with the IRA? How do they differ? Well, I think that uh, we, we have a shared endeavor, you know, which is to uh, ensure that we do this green transition, that we move to a net zero economy, and that this is profitable. Well, my side of things is the carrot, actually. I am the investor. So we are probably, the, we are the largest multilateral development bank in the world. Maybe people don't know, with a 600 billion balance sheet, 90% of the investments are done in the EU, where we are the largest investor in renewables. We're probably one of the largest investors in renewables in the, in the whole world. And right now here in the, in the UN General Assembly, around the, the General Assembly, I'm having lots of meetings, exchanges to try to bring that agenda forward with a global perspective. Well, Nadia, I mean, renewables is a very broad topic. It's solar, wind, water, nuclear. Talk to us about where you're deploying your balance sheet. I mean, 600 billion is a lot of money. Well, more than 50%, as I said, is going to climate finance. And this is sustainable infrastructures. This is sustainable transport. This is also renewables, wind, energy grids, solar, and also new fuels, the fuels of the future. For example, green hydrogen. We're supporting very innovative, large projects, also large traditional infrastructures, and dynamic startups that are really going to be the ones finding the technologies, the breakthrough technologies for all of us. I mean, we've seen with hydrogen, though, that a lot, that it's hard, that green hydrogen in particular is quite hard. I mean, Germany had to sort of backtrack from that, in particular with the war uh, in Ukraine. Um, in addition, like Orsted dropped and, and had to ditch out on a hydrogen project. Can you do hydrogen profitably? And how do you do that? Well, we have to. We have to because it is But can you right now? Well, we are right now we're investing in a number of projects in, in Europe which are more having to do with industry hubs. So we are greening industry, uh, highly polluting, highly energy intensive. So like industry. a cement industry that, that yes, and uh, steel, you. you know, all these large industry. So we are, we are we are seeing, for example, close to port to a port in the south of Portugal. We're going to have a green hydrogen hub. So that's very close to traditional industries, and we're helping them become green and also profitable. Uh, likewise, in other parts of Europe, you know, we are at the early stages of these new technologies, and it is only normal, you know, that some projects fail, that some projects are succeeding, and that's uh, that's why we are uh, the European Investment Bank is a public investment bank to take the risk to make sure that patient capital, long-term investors are taking those risks so that also we mobilize private capital and we make this a success. Well, you know, other multilateral finance institutions, I mean, development banks out of, for example, China, Korea, et cetera, have had a very poor track record of deploying capital profitably. And, you know, I know the AIB is different. I know the World Bank Group is very, very different. And I know we're talking about perpetual capital, perpetual investments. But at the end of the day, you do have to get a return on your investment. So talk to us about which sectors within the broader, you know, renewable space, within the broader climate space, carry the highest return on investment from your perspective. Well, actually, we are very profitable. Let me be very clear. The fact that we are a public bank doesn't mean that I don't have to deliver for our shareholders. Of course. So uh, around 2 billion euros we had in profit last year. We've been profitable since the bank was, uh, since its inception. We have a very low return, a uh, very low level of non-performing assets. When I say very low, I mean like 0.4% of our assets. Huh? So it is a very profitable bank. And what we have is a very large balance sheet and very balanced portfolio with large infrastructures, traditional infrastructures, which are very profitable, lower risk, and also highly risky endeavors like innovative startups or large investments into new green technologies. And that's what's allowing us, I think, to make a difference in making projects bankable at the end of the day. So what have you noticed in terms of if you support a project, does it bring in private investors and private capital at the end of the day? 
It does, absolutely. You know, the European Investment Bank is considered to be a reference in terms of technical expertise in some areas, for example, green, for example, health. So once the EIB says, yes, I'm going to invest in this project, immediately a number of investors say, I join. Hmm. Nadia, I'd love to ask you a question. I mean, in my world, the emerging market space, there has been a absolute explosion of sustainable finance vehicles and mechanisms, you know, green bonds, clean bonds, you name it. I'm curious to hear your thoughts about a lot of that. I mean, a lot of sovereign nations, a lot of countries are issuing debt under this green bond umbrella. You know, do you believe in that? Do you think they're just greenwashing or are they really deploying that capital in a clean and efficient way? We have to ensure, indeed, that the green bond standards around the world are not greenwashing. And that, that should be a top priority. Otherwise, you know, once you lose the credibility, then you lose everything in, in capital markets. I don't have to explain it to you. So that's why I think we have a very important, a shared uh, interest in having global standards. You know, the taxonomies that are being developed in different parts of the world, and Europe has been a pioneer in that area. Also, the European Investment Bank, by the way, has pioneered green bonds. And uh, we have to make sure that those standards are met and that uh, green investments are really green so that we make sure that this is providing sufficient finance to close the investment gap. How do you offset your risk? Sorry? How do you offset risk? when you're taking on riskier projects? Well, we have a capital base, but generally what we do is that we have riskier and less risky projects and we, we mobilize our capital in a very wise manner. You know, uh, Sometimes our shareholders and say, you should take on more risk because that's what your capital is for. But I think that we have a, a relatively good balance in terms can, of... Uh, can you give me a balance on that? Like what would be considered a low risk project? What would be considered a high risk, for example? Well, I, a, an infrastructure in a European country, that is a low risk project okay. you know, when we are building a, a trains or rolling stock or, or a metro Ports. or port i mean this is a, i mean we are lending to a sovereign state which has a very high rating and uh, this is our shareholders so investments within the eu are considered to be generally lower risk or for example we do also through the financial sector we do lending to smes in europe yeah. that is very profitable profitable lower risk than if we are investing in a very large project, one billion, two billion project in green hydrogen, as you were saying, you know. Well, you know, I'd, I'd like to take a variation on that question that's important because you're right, it's a lot of these small and medium enterprises, they're the ones who are actually proactively, you know, taking risk in the market. What sort of risk hedges, transmission vehicles, carbon credits, offsets, can they take advantage of? I mean, what's available to them to help offset their risk yeah. in this yeah. space? Good question. Well, what we do is we provide guarantees and uh, portfolio guarantees yes. or other sorts of uh, financial support to the banks so that they can lend to SMEs with lower interest rates. That's basically what we do. And again, we, that, that allows us to reach a, a large share of European SMEs. And they are, for example, now uh, investing in green technologies, energy efficiency, thanks to the support of the European Investment Bank. I don't know if many of them They're know it, you know, right. because they go to a bank, a commercial bank. And, but, you know, although they, are, uh, they have to signal in their loans that this is uh, supported by the European Investment Bank, I don't know if they always do. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is the EIB is one of the key elements that is driving the European economy. Where does natural gas fall into this for you guys? Well, we have to get away from natural gas. I right, mean, but uh, then you still need it, so uh, it gets hard. I understand, and we all understand, we are in the midst of a transition. But if there is one thing that we have learned due to the war in Ukraine, is that we cannot be dependent on Russia, <laughs> starting with Russia, but other parts of the world, be it talking about energy, chips, uh, other elements of the, of the supply chain, critical raw materials, you know. Europe has to stand up on its two feet and become independent when it comes to energy. That's, that's a clear idea, I think. You know, I, I want to talk about economic disparity, but more in terms of the type of partners you choose to go into business with, right? The types of banks, you know, I think of the Brookfields, the Blackstones, mm -hmm. the Macquaries, you know, these mm -hmm. big infrastructure investors, the Morgan Stanleys, you know, does that matter? Like, you know, it, can you partner with smaller banks, medium-sized banks, international banks? I mean, how often do you do that or do you kind of stick to the people you know and love best? No, we partner with uh, a lot of financial institutions around the world. Of course, we do a, a very serious check when it comes to not only the financial um, strength of the counterparties, but also compliance and reputational risks. Eh? 
but um, and also we are investing through funds, investment funds. We have a, a subsidiary, the European Investment Fund, which is partnering with private investment funds to then mobilize these uh, other sorts of venture capital and quasi capital investments. Yeah. What are the thing? What's the thing that you guys are most excited about right now? Either some kind of technology or a certain type of project that you feel like has real potential that could really unlock other opportunities. Well, I think there are two areas where, uh, uh, let me focus on what I have been discussing here in New York, okay. you know, because back in Luxembourg, yeah. there we discussed many other What's issues. going on behind closed doors here? Uh, right? Indeed, yeah. well, uh, that's why I'm going to give you a sneak preview. No, we have been discussing, there's nothing uh, so revolutionary or surprising, but actually I've been discussing, we've been discussing four main subjects, green, climate, mm -hmm. health, that's a big issue. I think that there's a lot of interest in health. Multilateral development institutions working as a system. Mm -hmm. We're working better than ever. We're cooperating with the World Bank, African Development Bank, Asian Development Bank, and we want to really uh, be giving as much value for money to our shareholders in supporting the global economy and investment. And then fourth point has been women. Uh, I think that there is also a lot uh, of, uh, there are a lot of things going on around the world in terms of partnering and networks of women. And I think we have to support that, uh, that endeavor also. Which definitely ties into health uh, also at the same time. All right, Nadia, thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. That was a wonderful uh, sort of a beneath the hood look on how you finance all of this. Nadia Calvino, President of European Investment Bank. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks to you. Bye-bye.